Oi, legends, Jason here from Tangier again. Been asked by the sales team again, once again, because they're too chicken to do a video. Um, and they've asked me to, to talk to you guys today about uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things they get asked and uh, something that there's a fair bit of confusion in the industry these days, and that is how long do flags last? Um, I can't, I can't lie to these people. I can't do it. So I'm going to tell the truth, right? And there's a lot of mistruths out there. Okay. So first, let's let's talk about what what are we talking about here? What we're talking about is teardrop flags, feather flags, bow banners, whatever you want to call them. You've seen those things before. If you're watching this video, you're more more than likely one of our trade clients. Um, so let's talk about some of the basics of what we're uh, what we're talking about here. Double-sided flags and single-sided flags. Uh, these two here we have is double-sided. Um, this this one here is single-sided. And I'll show you the difference in the fabrics. Right, so you can see there, that's a single-sided. It's slightly transparent. Double sided. Double sided, not transparent. Double sided reads correctly both sides. Okay, so the artwork and the design and your text and everything is going to read correctly both sides. Uh, single sided, what you'll get is uh, a colour image on the front and it will bleed through to the back, giving you a mirror image on the back. So the way these are printed, and, and I can pretty much say across the industry now, globally, uh, we're looking at almost 100% of these types of flags are printed uh, on polyester fabric uh, using a dye sublimation process. Okay, so in the old days, a fair few of them were screen printed. Um, these days, it's very rare to screen print them. No one will be printing these using a solvent ink or, or UV screen printing inks or anything like that. The, nearly all of them these days uh, are getting dye sublimated. The only time you'll see them screen printed is when you've got a single colour or full colour and, and some of them are getting, you know, like a thousand of them or, you know, 500. But, you know, even if you're ordering high quantities, 150, 250, 350, in most cases what you're going to find is they're going to be dye sublimated. Next thing we have is uh, is uh, the manufacturing process, and what we're talking about there is, is the cutting and sewing, etc., of these. Uh, so you can see here I've got two different examples, and uh, what we've got now, guys, is uh, we've got options for you. Okay, so we can make them both ways. We've always been able to make them both ways. Some customers like uh, this method of manufacturing, and some customers like the tube. So uh, well, well, we'll give you both. There's no real difference, uh, time-wise, or or anything for us, but I'll just explain some of the differences uh, between those two manufacturing methods. With this method, what we're doing here is we're, we're using a piece of binding just around this edge, just a small piece of binding, uh, and then we actually sew the sleeve in. Okay? So the benefits, the main benefits of that, and the, and the reason why people like this, why a lot of people like this, is because you can have your design right up to this edge here. Okay? So you can see here, uh, uh, this tube, whereas this method of making it, you have, it's all the visual area. It's, it's, it can be printed right up to the edge of the flag. Uh, a, lot of the, like, a lot of people like this method, and that's what we're finding is a lot of people like this method because uh, people find it hard to change because traditionally they were all done like this with the tube and all, their, all, all our clients' product images, because we're trade suppliers, right? So, all our clients have product images and, and a gallery of stuff and, and it all has this black tube on it. So they're like, oh, well, we, we need a black tube on it as well. So we can do it this way, sure. Um, and there's no difference in cost. Uh, it's just pick one of the other guys. Uh, if you have a look on the website, we've, got a, we've now got an option. Um, or, you know, when you're placing an order for flags, tell us what you want. Your, your customer service rep here at Tendi um, should ask you which way you want it. That's for double sided. So here's the thing: we, we're, uh, this method can only be done on double sided. All our single sided uh, flags 
have the tube. Okay, have the black tube. So if you're ordering a single sided flag, it's gonna have that tube on it. If you're ordering a double sided flag, you can choose between tube and no tube. Here's to the big question, how long are these things gonna last? And as I said, there's a lot of confusion in the industry. I've mentioned before that they're all dice sublimated. Most of the people that are gonna be printing these, they're dice sublimated. Um, what we find is in the people who, who are associated in the sign industry and the graphics industry, graphic design industry, there's a, there's the, this, uh, the three to five years <laughs> um, industry standard, you know, up to three years three to five years type thing. Yeah? Now that in the sign industry, we understand that's pretty normal in the sign industry for you know, SAB graphics and vinyl banners and things like that where you're using solvent inks and latex inks and things like that. Uh, but God, these are dye sublimated, okay? So what we find is our clients are telling their clients that, because their clients are asking how long are they gonna last? Oh, and they're saying three years and then they get these things and they fade quicker in three years or they deteriorate quicker than three years and then our clients are coming back to us and saying, hey, they faded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think that's the difference here is we're not gonna bullshit to you and that's what you need to understand. And what I'm gonna tell you here today is any, anyone who, uh, anyone who's sort of telling you differently, either, either is lying to you, flat out lying to you, or doesn't understand, or, or is misinformed. Okay? So I, I've, you can look me up, work out who I am. I've been in the industry now for about 25 years. And in that 25 years, I've also worked like, been forced to work 70 hours a week. Uh, so I've got a wealth of experience in this, and I've been doing this a long time. And I can tell you, if, if the technology was out there to make affordable, remember affordable, um, dye sublimated flags or affordable, uh, flags which are which were UV resistant or were going to give you that three to five years outdoor life. If there was uh, heat, uh, fabric, equipment or machinery out there that would do that, we would have it. I can guarantee we would have it. We print thousands of flags a year, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of flags a year. We would have it if it existed. Um, it may exist the ability to do that out there, but you will find that no one's using it because it increases the prices of the flags just way too much. And the fact is that you're not going to sell it. In the current market today, people aren't going to buy one of these for six or seven hundred dollars. They're just not going to pay that much money uh, for one of these. So even if the technology does exist now, uh, it would be very expensive. Um, and people aren't going to buy these for that price. Um, in saying that, guys, we need to remember that these teardrop flags are, it doesn't matter whether we're printing them, our competitors are printing them, whether you get them from China, whether you get them from Taiwan, uh, it doesn't matter whether you get them from Europe, the highest quality manufacturers in the world, it does not matter where you get them from, they are all low budget items. This is a low budget product. So we can't have the, the expectations of we're going to buy a super low budget product uh, and it's going to be indestructible. It's not going to be indestructible. These are not indestructible and they're not going to last forever. And because they're such low budget products, you have to expect that they're going to wear out or fade or deteriorate faster than something like a you know, uh, outdoor sign or something like that, which is obviously considerably more expensive. Okay. The truth, guys, if someone asked me how long are these going to last, I would say three to nine months. Okay, if you get more, more than nine months out of a, one of these flags, whether you buy it from us or China or anywhere, um, if you get more than nine months, you're going good. Okay, uh, we have had clients who have bought these and come back to us after you know four years or so and said, hey, these flags are faded. You did well. You did well, man. <laughs> okay, you, you got a, you got a good run out of them. Uh, so we have had flags that have been used outdoors and things like that. These these types of flags that have been used outdoors that have lasted years and years and years. But we've also had uh, customers come back with with uh, you know four five months time. Hey, these are deteriorated and they're faded and and they look like shit. 
okay? They're, it really depends on where they're getting used, how much sunlight and stuff. I'll touch on what are the main things that causes them to fade is, is sun, uh, but what are the main things that cause damage uh, or deterioration of the fabric is, is these things. Number one is they're put in a position where they cannot swivel. Okay, so if, if you fix somehow the bottom of the pole and don't let it spin on a spigot, right? One of the main things we see that causes damage is that they fix it to a spigot that won't allow it to, or fix it to something that won't allow it to spin. And this fabric gets wrapped up around and it causes tears in this area, okay? Uh, the second thing that causes damage, and this is probably the most common, is people put these in a position uh, outside with the wind and stuff like that. And they put these in a position up against the wall or something like that. And it hits a concrete wall or a brick wall or a tin wall or something like that. So what we see is a lot of the dead people that come back to us and say, hey, we've had this book. So a lot of the people that come back to us and say, hey, we've had this for a couple of months. We've had this for a couple of months and it's been damaged. And they show us the photos or whatever. And here it is up against the wall. Get out of my way. Here it is up against the wall, hitting the wall like this. And that's, that is uh, the most common forms of damage. And we get uh, a deterioration of the flag around this area where the pole is. And the pole wears through the fabric the thin, cheap polyester fabric, okay? Third common cause of damage is when people have their staff, you know, young guys go out, and, or young girls go out and set these up every morning and take them in every night. Uh, when they bring them in, they lean them up against the wall, just like what happened here with this one. Uh, they lean them up against the wall until tomorrow, and you know where you can see that but the edge of the the edge of the flag rubs against the wall okay so again that's one of the main causes of damage is this this edge where the pole is rubbing against the wall or falling over um, and and eventually wearing through the thin fabric what else do i need to say about these three to nine months guys